So there are different schools of Tibetan Buddhism. Some are more learned and virtuous, some are more wild and and like to meditate. Yeah, and meditate experience. And the so-called yellow hat or virtuous ones of the Dalai Lama, you know, are the ones who like to study and keep things out there. And they have a special understanding of emptiness which is called Rangtong. Rang means empty, uh, uh, Tong means empty and Rang means in its own nature. And now you'll understand why I began with molecular physics. Because, for instance, if we look at something like this cup, and try to examine its nature, then first people will say cup. But then somebody will ask, what cup, what does that mean? Says the cup, is that the cup, is that the cup, what is cup? And then one knows it's just a word. Then if one begins to examine that, then one finds molecules, splitting those, one finds atoms. <laughs> <laughs> if we split that, we get electrons, protons, neutrons, uh, uh, what's that? positrons. Right? <laughs> and if we split that again, you know, we get some very small things called quarks. <laughs> Quarks. And quarks. 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 And if we split that, actually, as we just see, you know, we get nothing, there's nothing solid there. Means form returns to emptiness. Form has no own existence. If we keep splitting it, in the end, there's nothing. That's actually what your forefathers, the old Greeks, you know, wanted to avoid by making the word atomos. They were very sensual people, you know, they had a close connection to their senses and they just didn't like the idea that maybe everything disappeared. So they just made a word deciding from a certain level it cannot be split anymore. So they made atomos, but many good hopes, no good results. Things disappear. So the people who think like that, they do, they have this idea wrong Tom. It is empty in itself. There is nothing there, ultimately. <coughs> then there are the people more from the Red Hat schools, the three old schools of Tibetan Buddhism, Sakya, Nengma and Kashi. And they actually say, they say Shentong. Tong still means empty. But Shen means more than and all on top of. Tong means more than or above. 
They say it's true everything is empty of any lasting existence, but there is something which is aware of that. There is a consciousness which knows that. <laughs> So Shen Tong says, it's true, we find nothing solid, but we are aware of it. You know, there is an awareness which knows that. And then there are the ter totally terrible Buddhists like Marilis and myself. Right? <laughs> and what do we say? We say Ditong. And that's not something for building walls or something like that. <laughs> De comes from Deva. <laughs> which means bliss. <laughs> and Tong is always means emptiness. <laughs> so what does that mean? <laughs> it means and it feels good. <laughs> Being that which is between the thoughts, behind the thoughts, there's a chain. If you're a famous man, come here. He's very chair. famous. There's a chair here. Okay. You have two chairs to choose from. Now you have to come. You have to come. Yeah. yeah. So here then you have Detong. It's not just space, but this space is conscious. And that space is joyful. Being the thought, that which is between the thought, behind the thought, which knows the thought, being awareness itself is totally blissful. That's what this one means. And that's what the yogis of the Kadri lineage mean, the means the people who invited to here tonight, right? And it means a rational understanding, even an emotional understanding is not enough. A total understanding of subject, object, and action is one. This is what's necessary. But they are conceptual, a rational, or experiential, <coughs> not emotional, but experiential. And you can understand, with, uh, with a background like that, it was very difficult for the West to find out what Buddhism was. Some notice that it is logical, stringent. That yeah, is logical. That it uses the same basis as ours, that you can only draw conclusions from positive or total premises. Positive, you can only draw a conclusion from positive premises saying it's this, uh, it is like that, or from part, uh, total premises covering the whole situation. Premise is, uh, is uh, yeah, what's it called? Yeah, the basis. You know, the basis. We say premises and conclusions, the hypothesis you would call it. Yeah. So that to be, and not from negative or partial ones. Uh, but on the other hand they were they, they were confused by Buddha's choice of answers. Because we hear of several situations where people came to the Buddha, learning people came to the Buddha and asked him something and he said, I'm not going to answer that. And 
And then when Buddha said, why not, you are the Buddha, you are, no, when they said, Buddha, you are, why not, you are the one who knows, you are the Buddha. <coughs> And then when they ask again, uh, he, he answered, because it won't benefit you. And when they asked again how, he said something like this. He said, if somebody has been shot by a poisoned arrow, what shall he do? Should he ask a lot of questions? Who shot? How old was he? Where did he live? How big was his family? What was his job? Or should he try to get the arrow out? And of course, the people said, arrow out. But then Buddha said, but listen, you've been shot. You've been born, so you'll surely get old, sick and die. So what are you now going to do with your precious time? Will you ask a lot of questions about things that have no relevance to your lives? Or will you get your mind to a level, you know, where old age, sickness and death don't hurt you anymore?